Hi, welcome to Planetary Calendars, Astro Portraits. I'm Ralph Dimitris, one of the calendars astrologers. This portrait is a, is a double. It's Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem, who are a married couple and are both nominated for Oscars in the 2022 nominations. Uh, Penelope for Parallel Mothers, uh, Javier for um, being, being the Ricardos. So, two different movies, but they're both up at the same time. We were originally just going to do Penelope because we've done a, we have done a series that included three of the other four nominees, of the women nominees, but then we realized, well, Javier's up there too. We can't leave him out. So it's just a wonderful portrait, and when you start looking into the charts, you really see why they make such a wonderful couple. And it's nice to have an opportunity to look at a couple. Yes, always nice. We did that with... Um, a couple of other recent ones, too, which was just really illuminating. Love is important. Even friendship is important. Penelope Cruz was born April 28, 1974, at 7 a.m. in Alcobenas, Spain. She's born with the sun at 7 degrees Taurus, also with Mercury at 0 degrees Taurus. She's born at the 28th degree of Aries rising. You know, when you get to those last degrees, the sign gets really intense. And then she has the moon in Cancer. Now, when you look at this chart, realize that the sun is below the horizon. So the moon becomes especially important. Okay, and the moon is in Cancer. The moon is in its feminine ruling position. It's a very, very strong moon. The moon is also accompanied by... Mars and Saturn both in Cancer. And this is real interesting because Mars in Cancer is what's called the fall position. It's a very deeply introverted position. This is someone who's physically very sensitive to others. Saturn in Cancer is what's called the detriment position. It's also a deeply introvert position, but a little more powerful than the, the fall. They're in the fourth house, Cancer's own house. So the moon is in her own house. This is a really powerful moon. That Cancer moon is a dominant force in her life. The sun in the second house in Taurus is very strong and very, very stable. And remember, Taurus is very involved with the arts. The arts very, very much matter to her. The Aries rising, there's no major planets there, though Chiron is at the rising. So this is a person who, who, has, who has experienced... Uh, wounding of some sort or, or pain or uh, illnesses at some point in her life that has added to her personal depth. Uh, she has Venus in Pisces. This is the exalted position. This is a very, very positive position. Loosely conjunct, very loosely conjunct Jupiter in Pisces in its feminine ruling position in the 12th house, which is one of Jupiter's houses. So this, this is a power, power duo. Jupiter, Venus, conjunct in Pisces. This is a person who has tremendous imagination, a some tremendous sense of romanticism, uh, a tremendous spirituality. It's in the 12th house of spirituality. And this is really a major factor about why she became an actress. It's the playing of it. It's the fantasy. It's that when she could get onto a stage or she could get into a studio and have that protected space and use her imagination, it was all the boundaries just disappeared for her. It was just a limitless world for her. And it's a place where she really thrives. She also had Juno and Ceres there, which is interesting because Ceres shows her ability to kind of herd others. So within a studio situation, she's always watching out for everybody else. She's very compassionate about them. She's very sensitive to him. So she's a wonderful person to work in an ensemble, you know, to work with a team of actors because they all need support. They all need, you know, some stroking and loving now and then. It's a very difficult work in a certain way. And Juno in the 12th house in Pisces means that she would work in that environment with her spouse, who is coincidentally an actor. So that's a real powerful place. So you have the Jupiter, Venus, Ceres, Juno, and Pisces, generally trying by sign, in some places actually aspecting uh, the Saturn, Mars, and Moon in Cancer. So this is a lot of water, a lot of water in this chart. 
Fortunately, you know, with the, especially when you have that Taurus sun, it could end up with a lot of mud if you didn't watch out. But that fire rising means it comes through this fiery filter, this very strong kind of personality is one to kind of step out and say, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Otherwise, if she did not have that rising, she really would have like drifted into the background. But that Aries rising made her kind of step forward in a lot of situations. Now, admittedly, it goes back to that Mars and Cancer in that fourth house. So she may arrive a lot of times with cookies <laughs> or with food or smelling like food. It's not a bad thing when you want to close a deal on like getting a part. There's nothing wrong with that at all to bring cookies. So, but these are real important factors. This is very much a womanly chart. You know, all this water, all this feminist science, very womanly, but coming through this fiery Aries filter. The thing that's real interesting is we're looking at a couple is what's the seventh house doing? You see, the fifth house has a lot to do with who we find romantically attractive. Okay, that's important, How we, where we have our fun. And there she has Leo in the fifth house. In the seventh house, she has Libra. So partnership's very important to her. And I looked at that and thought, geez, this could be trouble. She's got Pluto, Vesta, and Uranus there, which means it could be like exciting and a little bit difficult, especially because the Uranus is directly opposite the Ascendant. This is one of the places where you have a strong aspect. And I should step back. Speaking of those aspects between the water signs, her Venus and her moon, the two most feminine planets, have an exact trine. They're thoroughly supportive of each other. Her artistry and her femininity and her emotions are thoroughly supportive of each other. They, she has no problem going to great emotional depths. She's perfectly comfortable swimming in those areas. That's a great talent of her. So I imagine when she's working with other actors, that depth is something that very much impresses them. But to get back to the seventh house, you look at this and you go, oh, this could be a, he could be marry someone who's very eccentric or unusual or kind of controlling or, but she's got Vesta there. So marriage really matters to her. So let's look at her partner. Oh, well, guess what he has rising? He has Libra rising. He is in some ways the picture of her epitome of who a partner should be. The picture of it, okay? He has Uranus in Libra, they're born, not, they're born um, one's born in 69, he's born in 69, she's born in 74th, so Uranus was still in the same sign. He also has Jupiter there. So his Jupiter, his expansiveness, his generosity, his willingness to want to do things together because it's in Libra, lands in her seventh house of partnership. Now, let's go back to the romance. What does he have in Leo? His moon. His moon lands in her fifth house. So he brings all of that Leo 9 emotion to her love of, of passion and enjoyment. And, oh, well, let's go do this. It's, this sounds like fun. We should go do this. You want to go do this? We should really go do this. So he supports both those areas very, very powerfully. Of the three important parts you always look at in the chart, it's actually four, is the sun, the moon, the rising, and the fourth one is actually the midheaven. But... Of two of the points, his risings in her seventh, right, um, with the Jupiter, his moon is in her fifth, okay, and then he has, um, in Aries, and this is fascinating, he has Saturn and Venus closely conjunct in Aries, one degree away, 21 and 22, okay, they land right on her Chiron and quite close to her rising, so her, his Venus, his sense of artistry, his sense of love, his need for connection lands right on her rising, right on her front doorstep. You know, when he, she opens the door, there he is, right there. And Saturn's there. And this is a difficult Saturn. In fact, both of these, in the same way that she had um, Mars and Saturn in, um, in detriment and fall positions, he's got... Saturn in the fall position and Venus in the detriment position. They have that similar quality that at the, at the place where you should be most ambitious or most physical or most ambitious or most connected, there is something that makes them very introvert, which is really something that works well for an actor. It allows them to have that deep, rich inner life. And you get that sense from both of them from their artistry. They're, they have a lot more going on underneath the surface 
It shows up at the surface, but it's not contrived. It's just them manifesting. So he has that Saturn at her rising. What does it mean? She, he represents stability for her. She sees him as the older man. Now, they're only, how many, five years apart, but she sees him as responsible and serious. But she also sees him, it's Aries and it's Venus and Aries, as passionate. She sees him as passionate. Now, realize he has at his rising uh, the Uranus, the Jupiter, and then the Ascendant in the South Node. Um, so a lot of times with Uranus, are, you'd find that in star quality. People who, um, they become stars. They become, they're just exciting. You usually find that Uranus conjunct either the ascendant, uh, the sun, or the moon. In her case, she has it at the descendant. You don't see that as often. But it's kind of like when she reaches out and touches you, she sends a, a, a sizzle. You know, she, she her connection to you is where the sizzle happens. When it's just her, she's just this Taurian with a Cancer moon. But when she reaches out to you across the screen or in a performance, that's when the sizzle shows up. Now, there's all kinds of classic things about their couple. Um, for instance, the sun, uh, the sun between the two charts. In fact, for that, we need the dual chart. Um, the two suns at 11 degrees Pisces and 7 degrees uh, Taurus are sextile. The, um, his, um, her Mars Saturn grouping are trine his sun. I mean, there's all these sextiles and trines that go on between their two charts. There's a trine that goes on between his sun and, and her moon. But these are all things that make the relationship very stable because you're just comfortable with each other. So why did both of them get nominated for Oscars, besides the fact that they did incredible jobs in their, in their roles? But what's going on in their charts that shows that? Well, for Penelope, she's having a Jupiter return. Jupiter is back in Pisces, her natal position going through her 12th house. Remember, this is a Jupiter sign, traditional Jupiter sign in Jupiter's house. That's pretty good. That's pretty definitely get you some sparkle there. Additionally, Saturn, the planet of achievement, is passing right up by her part of fortune, right? And her palace Athena. So part of fortune is your earth interface. How do you connect to the earth? Saturn is the most like earthiest of the big planets in terms of achievement. So the achievement planet is passing over the place where she makes her money in the 11th house, the area in which money comes into you. So in other words, Winning an Oscar is going to very much affect how much she gets paid for movies. So it's a real, you know, even the nomination is going to affect her. Pallas Athena, it's the the warrior goddess, the god, the the person of skills, and it's all about her skillfulness as an actor. So those those two areas are really really prominent. For Javier, what's going on in his chart? Well, the Jupiter, remember, it's going over. Her Jupiter, it's passing over his sun. So everything is getting like expanded in his life. You know, everything's getting bigger in his life. It's going through the sixth house. That's where his sun is, natally, the area of his basic work. His basic work is acting. And it's really expanding that area. It's bringing a highlight onto that area. What is um, Saturn doing? Saturn's passing through his fifth house, his house of creativity. Remember, he's a moon in Leo person. A, a Piscean with a moon in Leo, a highly elevated moon. He's a nighttime chart, so that moon in Leo is tremendously dominant in his chart. The moon doesn't get really any stronger than that unless it was maybe in Cancer or Sagittarius. But it's a very, very strong moon. This is his love of performing, of being on stage. It, in many ways, is much stronger than that Pisces sun. That Pisces sun is his imagination, his ability, his basic skill is imagining things, of creating an illusion. Pisces in the sixth house. But that Saturn going over that Mercury, Saturn and Mercury, that's the grandfather and the grandchild, you know, natural allies. He has Mercury in Aquarius, the exalted position. He is being exalted for his achievements at this time. 
So very cool. So they both have great transit at the same time. The fact that they're married and they're both up for roles in different movies is thoroughly romantic, I think. And I think in the future we're going to do um, another series eventually. We're about just starting our music series now. But after that, maybe we'll do a series on couples. Don't you think, Lonnie? Absolutely. The romantic in you requires it. Okay. Well, good. Well, that's our portrait for this week. Please come back and see us on Tuesdays when we do our astro portraits. I hope they're educational and entertaining. Come back and see us on Fridays when we do our forecast for the coming week. You can find those both at Planetary Calendar Astrology on YouTube. Please subscribe and click that little bell so you remind us. So when the for, you know portraits and forecasts come up, you know what's going on. And if you don't have your calendar yet... Your planetary calendar, whichever year you're seeing this in, you can find those at planetarycalendar.com because you really need to know what's going on. Until next time, be well. Be well.